In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this location guessing game. It's based on Google Maps and Google Street View. The idea is I have to work out where I am, just looking at clues in the Street View photographs. When I think I know where I am, I can type my guess. And then I'm presented with a different location. This is a web application which makes use of HTML and JavaScript. I think I know where this is. More importantly, this makes use of the Google Maps application programming interface. With the Google Maps API, you can write your own applications that take advantage of the power of Google Maps and Google Street View. When you've got the basic game working, you can think about improving the user interface. For example, rather than typing in a guess, you could allow the user to select it from a map, like this. Rather than just giving the user a score, you could tell them how close or how far away they are from the location where they landed. Let's see how the basic game is built. Before you can write code that makes use of the Google Maps API, you need to sign up for an API key. This is easy enough to do. Just search in Google for Google Maps API and sign up to the Google Cloud Platform. If all you want to do is play around with the code, it shouldn't cost you anything. You can get $300 worth of credit for free to use over 90 days. You will have to enter your debit or credit card details, but they won't charge you automatically if you use up your credit. If you're building a commercial application which is making a lot of calls to the Google API, then it might start costing you something. You get charged per API call. I've already signed up and I've created a new project, so I have a key. I've also put some restrictions on the use of my key. As I said, if you want to do this, you really need to get your own API key. So now I'm going straight to the Google Maps API documentation. There's a lot of information here, which would take a long time to dig your way through. But there's also a lot of very useful sample code, which you can copy and adapt for your own use. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to build my application using Notepad++. You can use any programming environment you like, but this one is nice and simple, and it's free. I've already set the language to HTML. And I'm going to start by simply taking the sample code from the documentation to see what it does. The sample code is separated into JavaScript. CSS, HTML, and of course I want all of it, so I'm going to copy all of it. And in order to make it work, I need to put my API key here. So that's my key in place. Let's see what it does. View current file in, let's use Chrome. Well, I've got something. I have a street view. And I have a map. And it's not much of a guessing game yet because I can see that I'm in Fenway Park, somewhere in Boston, Massachusetts. I've also got some options here where I can switch between the map and satellite view. And there's some extra controls here as well. So let's see what we can change. For a start, I don't want the map. Now, if I examine the initialize function here, I can see that this little piece of code is displaying the street view, and this piece of code is displaying the map. So I'm simply going to remove this. Let's see what the difference is. 
Well, I've got rid of the map, but I now have a big white space on my screen. Let's try and get rid of that. Looking at the code again, I can see a section here entitled POV. Now, presumably, that means point of view. That's something to do with the camera. Let's change these numbers and see what the effect is. Let's go for 10 and 5. Save again. Yeah, it's definitely a change of camera angle. That's the original, and that's what changing those numbers has done for me. That's better, actually. Here's the CSS section, and I can see a style for the map and for the panoramic view. Currently, the width is set to 50%. Let's change that to 100%. Well, now the whole thing is white. But in the HTML section, I have a div tag for the map. Let's get rid of that. Well, we're getting there. But I've still got this pin control with the address in it, so it's not much of a guessing game yet. Let's see if I can get rid of this. I'm going to go back to the documentation and look at some of the other examples. There's some information about mobile devices. I'm not too worried about that just yet. Ah, now this looks promising. Overlays within Street View. Street View Events. And Street View Controls. That looks promising too. I can see some instructions here where we're setting the Links Control, the Pan Control, and the Enable Close button to false. Let's see what they do in my program. These are the various parameters that the Street View Panorama constructor is taking, so I think I can just add my code to this. Let's see if that works. It's definitely done something. I can see I've got rid of the pan control here. But I still have this here. I need to know what this is called. It's got the address on it. Let's take a look at the documentation, see if there's any clues. And there's a clue. Address control options. Presumably that's controlling the little box with the address in it. So I'm going to set that to false as well. Let's copy that from the documentation, and we'll add it to this list. And it's gone. We're getting to a point now where there aren't many clues coming from the system itself. We have to examine the photograph to work out where we are. I want to get rid of this plus and minus sign. Let's get rid of these as well. We can still zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. I'm going to start looking through this documentation, and here we go, zoom control. That's what I want to get rid of. And I seem to have completely destroyed the view altogether. Let's see if I can figure out why. I put a semicolon on the end of that line instead of a comma. That's better. Zoom control has gone. And as I said, I can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel if I want to. OK, it's pretty obvious where I am. But all the clues are coming from the photograph. Actually, that's not quite true. I can see some street names written on the ground as well. I'll think about getting rid of those in a moment as well. What I'd like to do now is add some more locations. At the moment, you can see that this has been hard-coded with the longitude and latitude coordinates of Fenway, which is, of course, in Boston. I'm going to declare an array variable with lots of locations in it from which I can choose one at random when the application loads. I'll give myself a bit of room in the script section. I'm going to have an array of tuples, and I'm going to use the same format which I can see here. So let's just borrow this little piece of code. 
That's still Boston. But I'm going to have Middlesbrough as well. I'll change the longitude and latitude coordinates later when I found out what they are. And now a bit of copy and pasting to speed things up. And let's not forget Boston. Now, to get the longitude and latitude coordinates, I'm going to have to do a little bit of research. Let's start with Middlesbrough. There it is. And I need to make sure I choose somewhere which actually has a street view. Otherwise it isn't going to work. And it looks like that would work. Let's go for somewhere near the transporter bridge. Copy that and paste it into my code. So there's my location data. Of course, the more I have, the better the game will be. Now let's select one of these at random. I'm going to have a variable called current location. And I'm going to select something from the locations array using a random number. Math.random does the same thing as many other programming languages. It'll generate a random number between 0 and 1. So I need to multiply this by the length of the array, which is the number of cities I have. And now I need to make sure that this is rounded down to the nearest integer. So I'm going to wrap it up inside the math.floor function. I'm going to store the coordinates of that location in a different variable. Current coords, current coordinates. And you can see I'm getting the zeroth tuple of the current location. So I'm picking up the longitude and latitude. And I also want the name of the city. So that's tuple number one of the current location, dot city. My initialization function has the name of a location followed by its coordinates. So I'm going to replace this with current city equals current coords. That is in the same format is what I originally had for Fenway in Boston. And there's one more thing I need to change, which is the position. That should be current city as well. Now, if all of my spelling is correct, I think that's going to work. Let's check it out. So there's something not quite right with the code. And I can see a tiny little error in the way I've spelt length. Such a simple mistake is stopping the whole thing from working. Let's see if that's fixed it. That's more like it. Now, there are still one or two little clues in here which I'd like to get rid of. I don't want the street names on the road. Let's remove those. This time I just went into Google and searched for how to remove street labels from a Google map. And I discovered this. Show road labels false. And now all of the clues have to come from the photograph. If I didn't know any better, I'd say this was somewhere in Brazil. Now let's make this into a guessing game. I'm going to write a little function to prompt the user to make a guess and then check if the guess is correct. There's the prompt and the user's guess will be put into the variable called guess.
and I want a button that the user can click on when they're ready to make their guess. When they click on the button, it'll run this function. So I'm going to overlay a floating panel on top of the street view. Let's take a look at the documentation again to see how to do this. The section on overlays looks promising. I can see a div tag here in the body section called floating panel. And that has a button inside it. When this button is clicked, it runs the function toggle street view, which I can see here. Obviously, I want my button to run my program. So let's borrow this div tag. I'm going to paste that into the body section of my web page. And we'll just change the wording a little. And it's going to run the program check guess. I probably need some CSS to style this as well. So let's pop back to the documentation. And here's some CSS for the floating panel. So I'm just going to borrow this as well. And that can go into my style section. Needless to say, I could spend a little bit of time messing around with this and getting the appearance the way I want it. But let's just see if it's going to work now. Yep, so there's my little button. I'm ready to make my guess. I think I know where I am, so let's click on the button. What is the name of the city? I'm going to type my answer in, and I think this is London. Wrong. <laughs> let's try again. Perhaps it's Campinas. Correct. I should point out that this is actually case sensitive. If I type Campinas like this, which of course somebody might well do, I'm wrong. So I'm just going to remove the case sensitivity from that test. Another very typical way of removing case sensitivity, which you'll come across in other programming languages, whatever the user types in will be converted to lower case on the fly. And then this will be compared with the lowercase version of whatever the city name is. Let's keep testing as we go. <laughs> I'm not sure where this is at all. Uh, let's just refresh the page for an easier one. I think that is Scotland. Of course, Edinburgh with a capital E is correct. And with a lowercase e, yep, that's fine as well. But of course it's not Campinas. OK, what we need now is some scoring. I'll have a variable called score. And we'll initialize that to zero. And in my checking function, if you're correct, I'll add one to the score. Score plus equals one. That will increment it. If you're wrong, nothing will happen. You just get told you're wrong. Now, whether the player scores a point or not, we'll reset the street view so they can play again. I'm going to write another function called go again. So we're just selecting another random city and then we're calling initialize again. Let's test it. And that seems to be working fine. I'm getting the same location over and over here. The more locations I have, the better it would be. I just need to add some more data to that array variable. 
Crikey, that's a pretty grim looking place, isn't it? Now, there are lots of things I could do to improve this game. Making a guess by clicking on a button and then typing in the name of the city is a little bit inconvenient. What I could really do with is a map, perhaps down here, and then I click on the location, which I think it is, on the map. And then I could get some feedback on not only whether I've scored a point or not, but how far away I am. With a little bit more work and a little bit more research, I'm pretty sure I could do that.